This is a short video where we do an example of RSA encryption and about encoding messages, encrypting them, sending them, and then somebody decrypting it, and decoding it. So we're going to put all the pieces that we've uh, been building in previous videos, we're going to put all those pieces together on this video. So for our example, uh, just following Stein's number theory book, we've got Nikita and we've got Michael and they want to communicate with each other securely. So Nikita is going to kind of build the foundation for this RSA crypto system. So maybe that's where we'll start. And so uh, Nikita, what is she going to do? She's going to write an RSA type of function. So an RSA function, and what should it do? It's going to generate so an RSA function that generates n, which is equal to two big primes p times q, um, a key e, and her secret key d. So e is a public key, n is part of the public key, and d she's going to keep secret. So uh, the way that we're going to do that is by the following. So here's the RSA function. To find RSA, it'll input bits. And uh, let's see what we'll do here. We'll say only prove, just following what the Stein's number theory book is telling us to do uh, up to 10, 24 bits, by the way. So I'm looking at the code in Stein's number theory book uh, on page 58. If you think it's faster to type it in yourself or you can keep watching. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take numbers that uh, roughly have two to the 1024, that power, that's how many digits our particular number has, which is a little over 300 digits. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're going to generate an n that has roughly 300 something digits and so the next thing that we'll need here is proof is uh, bits less than or equal to 1024 just to make sure this will work for such numbers is all this is trying to say so here's where we generate our big primes so that when we multiply these two primes again we get something that's a little over 300 digits long so p is going to be a next prime and I want it to be kind of random. So zz.random will do that for me, random element. And how big do I want it to be? Say two raised to the power. One way to do that is with these double asterisks. And the exponent will be bits. I'll take the floor of that when I divide by two, and I'll add one. And uh, at the end, what else do I want? I want that there. I think I need to end those. And then now, something like proof equals proof. That's what next prime needs. I'm going to do the same thing for Q. In fact, I'm really just going to copy paste that code. So I'll just type it in though, because I'm too lazy to copy paste. You could argue that this is harder than copy paste. It's a good argument. Bits, floor when you divide by two plus one, and then proof equals proof. Great, so I've got a P and a Q. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say N should be defined to be P times Q. Cool. And what else? Now, like phi of n should just be uh, p minus 1 times q minus 1. If you try to use like Euler's phi function in Sage here, that's too much for it to compute. It's a lot faster for Sage if you just tell it p minus 1 times q minus 1. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to define phi of n to be equal to, oops, um, what I just say, p minus 1 times q minus 1. So it's a little faster if you just tell Sage this is what it is. And uh, now what we're gonna do, how do we get an E and how do we get a D? So we've got our N, which is made of P and Q. Remember, everybody's gonna know N, but only Nikita knows P and Q. That's the game here. And what else? I'm gonna tell you how to get E and D now. So how do we make one in, in Sage here? So while true, uh, E is gonna be some random number. Remember, E gets to be random as long as it's between one and five N with one more condition that I'll talk about in a moment. So zz.random element one to phi n. And what else? I wanna make sure though, this e can't be anything. It's gotta be relatively prime to whatever phi n is. So it's gotta be relatively prime to p minus one times q minus one. So if the GCD of e and uh, phi sub n, if that is equal to one, I want this while loop to stop, so break. We're gonna get ourselves out of the while loop. So it's stopped, that means we've got a good E. So I pick a random E that's relatively prime to phi n. And then now I'll define D. D should be the inverse of V mod phi n. So how we'll say that, uh, E is going to be, I'm sorry, D is going to be, we'll call it a lift of, I'll tell you why lift is used in a minute, E phi n, and we said I want that um, inverse. So to the minus first power. Now, like mod e phi n, that's an element of uh, that 
uh, that group, right? Z mod phi n z. Um, and so say just thinking about that as the elements of that weird, that weird group, I want D to be an integer. So that's what lift does. Lift takes that and it just changes where it's from, it changes its set and it makes it an integer. Um, it's more just kind of a notational thing than um, anything else. But uh, anyway, that's the last part of this. And at the end, I want it to return E, D, and N. So that's our RSA function here. And so to give you an example of what we'll do, so Nikita just built this, and here's what the next thing she does. So Nikita's gonna run this function, and she's gonna publicly share E and N. So, okay, Nikita runs this function, and uh, publicly shares, publicly shares E and N. But she keeps D to herself. She keeps D secret. So nobody knows what D is. But uh, so what would this look like? Um, in this case here, what we'll do is we'll say, I want E, D, N to be equal to RSA, and let's do 1,000. So I'm gonna make sure that N is a number that has two to the 1,000 digits, uh, which is again, um, I'm sorry, it's a number that's uh, it's bits is it's two to the one, one thousand bits, so that's about a number that has three hundred digits. That's what I meant to say. Cool. And so n has um, one thousand bits, meaning it's a number, a number, an integer with about three hundred digits. Cool, and that's pretty secure. Okay. So then, what do I want to do? Just so we're gonna share it, I'll say, let's print. So I'll say, let's print um, E equals E, and then I have too many too many of those there. And let's say I wanna print uh, N2. Just to again emphasize that it's okay that we share these, right? We're gonna share this with the world in there. So let's run that, see if it does anything. I'll cross my fingers, very cool. So if I scroll down a little bit, you see there's my E, it's pretty gigantic, and there's my N, it's also massive. Uh, and now again, the point of this is like, it's really hard to factor that N, super hard. That's what makes this really secure. Given that N, it's really hard to recover what P and Q would be. Only Nikita knows what those are. Okay, so and again, also here too, anyone who wishes to communicate with Nikita they're gonna use this E and this N. So again, that's public information. So Michael in particular, if he wants to send Nikita a message, he's gonna use this E and this N to do so. So Nikita kind of sets the conditions for that. Anybody that wants to communicate with her uses E and N. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna to move to Michael's scenario. So Michael wants to send Nikita some kind of a secret message. So send Nikita a secret message. Maybe I'll scroll a little bit so you can see where I'm typing at. All right, so like what's like a cool, this show's like a spy show, right? So I had to think of something corny and spy-like. So let's say the secret message, let's say she's like done with her mission extraction at 0300 hours. That sounds like super corny and spy-like. All right, cool. And so he wants to send Nikita that particular message and what we're going to do is we're going to encode that message. So we need our encode function. And so if you remember, uh, what does that look like? This is from the last video. I'll just type it in again. So encode a string S. First thing, we, we turn that into a string. And then what do we want this function to do? We want it to return the following sum. Remember ORD. That's going to use the ASC2 um, character, or ASC2 um encoding scheme where it takes like all your common keyboard commands and sends them to a number. Again, this is not encryption. This is just a way to encode phrases and stuff and commands as numbers. So ORD of S. So that part of your string, like the ith part of your string. So like I is a number from zero to however long the string is. And remember what you do is you take that and you raise it. So you multiply it by 256 to the ith power. Like where is it at in your string? Um, for I uh, in range len s, just however long your string is. Okay, I think that's enough there. So Michael's gonna do that. So what am I gonna say? Let's say m is equal to encode, and normally what you might do is just say, I'm gonna encode that message, extraction at 0300 hours. 
Now, what's also common to do, like in practice, um, is to add what's called salt to your message. And that's just to make the encryption a little bit more secure later on. So what that means is maybe at the beginning, I'm just gonna add some random characters. And at the end, I'm just gonna add some random characters on it. All right, cool. So that's, just to show you what happens here, that'll change how that M's encoded, right? So that random stuff in there changes how this thing's encoded. And later on, that's gonna make it harder to detect how it's encrypted too. So it's just kind of an extra security feature here to add that stuff in. So that's our M. And so remember the game now, what's the next part of this game? So I think we are ready. We've got our encoded message. What we're gonna do is encrypt that now. And so I'll scroll down a little bit. Uh, Michael encrypts um, this message, M by, what do they do? Remember, you raise that to the eth power and reduce it mod n. So again, you use ENN. That's the public key Nikita shared with anybody. Anybody that wants to communicate with Nikita, that's how they use ENN. They take this encoded message, they raise it to the eth power, and they reduce it modulo n. And so when we do that, let's call it something, say like um, C is equal to, oh, I need an encrypt function, don't I? So Michael needs an encrypt function. So let's define that. So the encrypt function, what would it look like? So encrypts, I need M, I need E, and I need D, I'm sorry, N. I don't need D yet, that's for decrypting. And what should it do? It should just return uh, lift mod M, N to the E. So take M, raise it to the ETH power, reduce it mod, mod N. And what the inside the brackets, is, inside the parentheses is doing, it's considering that as an element of that group, Z mod NZ. It's gonna raise that to the ETH power. So again, it's an element of that finite group. And then the lift part just says, yeah, don't think of it as an element of the finite group anymore. Think of it as a normal integer. It's a little bit subtle, the difference between the two. If you're in the, pro, in the, the mindset of like, oh, I just kind of think of them as integers with like certain bounds anyway, like, eh, it's okay. We're just being pretty technical here. Cool, so Michael's got his encryption function now, and what we said we wanna do is we wanna do something like C is equal to encrypt his message. So encrypt, and I've already got my M, I already know what E is, E was defined above, and I already know what N is, N was defined above as well. So we will encrypt it. Okay, cool, and if we wanted to see what does C look like when it's encrypted, there it is. So what Michael would do is Michael would copy paste this 698 blah, blah, blah number in like an email or a text message and send that to Nikita. And when you send that, you're sending that public here, right? Like we're, we're entertaining the possibility that somebody could like read your email or read your text message. But the point is the only person who's likely to be able to make sense of it is Nikita. And let's talk about how. So what Nikita would do, she receives Michael's message so Nikita uh, receives the above encrypted message C. Encrypted message C. So what does she need to do? She needs to first decrypt that message. And so how does she decrypt the message C? She raises it to the dth power and reduces it mod n. And remember D, that's her secret key. This is where she uses it. So she decrypts. Um, this message by raising, that doesn't say raising, raising to the dth power and reducing mod n. And so maybe why? Because recall that e and d were inverses of each other mod phi of n, and so in particular, um, m to the e d, I don't know, there's too many parentheses here, m to the e d power is congruent to m mod n that's why this will work that'll give m back so let's do that so nikita needs some kind of a decrypt function so let's define that so define decrypts and what should the parameters of the decrypt function be it would be good if you spelled decrypt right too so decrypt which should take a c a d and an n those things it should know and again these are all things that nikita has on hand and what do we want it to do we said that we just want to return um, again, lift just to make it an actual integer because technically we're playing with elements of some kind of a group, but mod. So we're going to take whatever C is modulo N and raise that to the dth power. So let's do that. So let's, uh, 
see what we get when we decrypt the C that I've defined above, the 698 blah, blah, blah number. It's already saved to C, so that's pretty cool. So C, uh, I've already got D. I don't think I showed you what D is yet, but that just goes with the flavor of D's secret and only Nikita knows. So, I mean, we should know either, right? Even though we're pretending to be Nikita right now. So let's decrypt this thing here and uh, let's give it a name to, actually, let's say, yeah, let's give it a name. A is equal to decrypt that. And then let's actually like call A and see what it looks like. All right, cool. And maybe if you notice that 1989 number is this on the bottom, it's the same as the 198 number that you see at the top. But Nikita's decrypted it now. Again, that's something that only Nikita has the power to do. She, well, theoretically anyway, only she has the power to find this thing here. And then now what Nikita would do is decode this. So this is the encoded message, right? It's no longer encrypted, it's no longer secret. This is just kind of base 256 if you look at the ASC2 table, if you understand how the numbers are assigned to those keyboard commands. So anyway, what Nikita needs now is the decode function. Now Nikita decodes this message. And so how would you do that? And then now we'll just copy paste or write down the decode function from the last video. And so uh, what did that look like? I would define decode. And uh, what do we want it to do? We want it to decode an integer. And uh, so n should be equal to uh, integer n. Uh, v is gonna be like this empty string. So I'm just kind of talking through the same thing as last time. While n is non-zero, I want the following to happen. I'm gonna take that empty empty list, it's not a string, sorry. So V is an empty list, and I'm gonna start adding stuff to it. And remember, you're gonna keep dividing by 256, and you're gonna take the remainder. And every time you do that, you get the remainder, that's what we're gonna to add to this empty list V. So V.append, and then we said that uh, V.append chr n uh, modulo 256. And remember, that'll recover when you reduce, you get the remainder. Just what it, what character does that correspond to on your keyboard? And what do we want to do? Then we want to make n smaller, right? Like we've divided by 256. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the quotient, right? And I need to take the floor. So n slash slash equals 256. So take the floor, repeat, right? So we're just going to keep constantly dividing by 256 figuring out the remainder, figuring out what character that corresponds to on the keyboard, divide by 256 again, repeat, blah, blah, blah. And that's what this does. And eventually you're gonna to get to the point where n is equal to zero when you take the floor, and that's gonna get you out of the while loop. So I'll back up here. And then what do we want to have happen? I wanted to take all the things that are in your list V now, and just mash them together into a string. So the way to do that is return um, this empty, empty string, sorry, dot join. So join is some kind of operation you could do on a string. So empty dot join all the stuff in V. Okay, cool. So let's make sure that this works. I just said I wanted to decode and I called it A above. So A is what I'm calling my number 198 blah, blah, blah. And let's, let's view it. Cool. And it looks like I get two things there. I'm not quite sure why. Um, oh, sorry. I didn't need to say A. My bad. I'll just say decode A. There. And so the point you recover the message. And again, Nikita sees this and she's gonna make sure that she is at that rendezvous point at that time.